Hi guys, I'm Dionzu. I'm in hell right now, but that's an aside. Before the show begins, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications whenever I upload new content. Anyways, without further deliberation, let's get on with the show. Ah yes, the overworld. The most hospitable region of Minecraft. Minimal deficits, no hobies, and a serious lack of content in certain biomes. And I'm not gonna wait for the biome votes. Thus the environmental mod by Minecraft Abnormals. Environmental mainly adds depth to the pre-existing biomes, but also adds a few new biomes to spice up the game. So, let's dive down into it. The Flower Forest is a biome I have some fondness for, and thankfully, it's been given a few updates, the most noticeable being the Wisteria, a flowering tree endemic to the Flower Forests. It has four variants and a nice ivory-colored wood. Along with that, two new types of flowers have been added, the multicolored Delphinus and the Cartwheel. While not exclusive to the Flower Forest, you may happen upon a deer in this biome. Deer are skittish, with them running away from you, but if you do manage to hunt down one of these creatures, you'll acquire venison, a new variety of meat. While similar to the flower forest, the Blossom Woods is still quite distinct, with it harboring its own endemic flower tree, the Cherry Tree. This plant has pink flowers for leaves that, similarly to oak trees, can drop fruit while decaying, in this case, cherries, which can be turned into a pretty nice pie. If you do cut down a cherry tree and turn it into a plank, it will reveal its vibrant red wood that finally fills in the smithing table shaped hole in my heart. Oh yeah, but uh, also a cool villager. Koi are a type of fish found only in the Blossom Woods that can give nearby players the Serenity Effect, a status effect that prevents mobs from spawning around the player, thus finally separating moodily lit buildings from mob farms. Found within the mountain biome, the Yak is a neutral relative to the cow, and while it may seem like an easy kill, you do not mess with the Yak. In fact, to show you how much of a bad idea it is to mess around with the Yak, I have decided to get pushed off a cliff by one for your information and our entertainment. So, let's begin. Okay, three. Two, one. All right. All right. Order. Okay. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna? Oh no. Now you might ask, if the yaks can mess you up that badly, then what's their use? Well, dear viewer, you see, yaks can be sheared for their hair, which causes them to go insane. However, this hair can be used to create really soft rugs that feel really nice to lay on, and man, I need to get one of these. But that's an aside. For you see, yak hair can also be used to create yak hair pants, and aside from also feeling really nice, also gives the player's mount extra speed, makes shearing yaks a lot less insane, and lastly, gives the player something similar to auto jump. Before we reach the swamp and its wildlife, let's take a little bit to talk about the other, smaller additions to the game made by Environmental. For example, there are several new flowers like the hibiscus, bluebell, and violet. Two new villager workstations have been introduced, those being the kiln of the ceramist, which functions as the fast cooker for clay and bricks, and the sawmill of the carpenter, which is essentially the stone cutter for wood blocks. In the wild, you may encounter the nest of a chicken or a certain bird we will talk about later. Mycelium and Podzil are now paveable like grass. There are several new food items, and you can now in fact fry an egg. A new grass variant known as Mycelium Sprouts will now generate in mushroom biomes. Two new music discs known as Leaving Home by Hats and Dogs, which is acquired by <coughs> killing a wandering trader with a skeleton, and Slab Rave by Mista Jub, which is acquired by feeding a disc to a slab fish, have been added. Here's a preview of the two songs. If you want to skip over these parts, you can check the description.
And finally, ice and terracotta have both received a brick variant, along with other forms. The swamp is the second biome that is receiving an expansion from environmental, with the once unobtainable swamp oak now being replaced by the willow tree, a somewhat ominous looking tree with green wood. Beyond that, you may also notice that giant mushrooms have started cropping up everywhere, which is actually based off the swamps of Bedrock Edition, which have giant mushrooms on them naturally. If you take a closer look, you may notice that some smaller plants have been added, like cattail and duckweed, with both being capable of being turned into patch. If you ever decide to venture into a swamp, you may happen upon the slabfish, everyone's favorite local- Slabfish can become quite useful if you own a backpack, for you see, when it has one, it will be capable of picking up any dropped items. As a side note, you can also give your slabfish some cute sweaters to further deck them out, and I think they're pretty cute. I like them. Ducks, while not found only in the swamp, are still a common sight, and are yet another food source in game. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that was quite short, actually. Uh, next thing. The second biome added by environmental is the marsh, a flat, plains-like biome, chock full of giant tall grass, and also, the only place where you can say double tall grass, you half slabbers. <coughs> Along with that, it is also home to rice, an endemic crop that you can use to make kelp rolls and rice cakes with, and is also home to objectively the best flower in the game, the Deanthus. Environmental offers an entire set of levelable, specialized gear that can give the user various abilities. Starting off with the Thieves' Hood, this functions as the helmet for the set and is acquired as a rare drop from skeletons, and fittingly enough, is leveled up by mob kills. When worn, it gives the user stealth, and as a hidden plus, also hides the user's identity, so feel free to commit all the eel related crimes you want. Up next is a healer's pouch. This item is the chest flavor of the set, and is a rare drop from mobs and strongholds and mineshafts. What makes this item special is that, whenever you take damage, you'll receive regeneration along with a new effect called panic, that causes you to go faster depending on how low you are on health. This panic system functions as the leveling for the pouch. However, be aware, panic also does have a cooldown, so tread with caution. The architect's belt is the leggings of the set, and grants the user extra reach. If you want to acquire this, you're going to have to trade for it from a master carpenter, mason, or ceramist. And if you want to level it, you should probably start placing some blocks. The wanderer's boots are, of course, the boots of the set, and are acquired from the lead in Leatherman, aka the wandering trader, making them somewhat worthwhile to not just ignore or kill on sight. When worn, the user becomes faster, and the more they wander, the faster they become, maxing out at 40% more speed. The show's gotta come to an end, so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. This is your host, Deontay.